Have you ever heard of the word herping? Yep, me neither. Not until recently. It's a term that describes the act of searching for an amphibian or reptile. As a kid, I was obsessed with animals, and without even knowing what herping was, that's all I wanted to do. But I couldn't. I was too young, and it was too dangerous. So to compensate, I spent my time watching all types of wildlife documentaries, and also used my toy scorpions, spiders, and snakes to scare off adults. It's actually scientifically proven that snakes are some of the top animals we fear. They're slimy, sneaky, slithering creatures that can be venomous and dangerous. Whoa! Even in pop culture and ancient beliefs as far as Adam and Eve, the snake was perceived as evil. Literally. Satan itself. Oh. Funny enough, that's precisely what we're looking for today. No, not Satan, I mean snakes. And any other kind of wildlife that we can find around Lebanon. Even if the country's tiny, its variety of microclimates allows for a wide range of species to live here. And we're doing this with the best in the game. A couple of months ago, I came across the projects of Rami and Rudy, who go herping during their free time and document their finds. And oh boy, do they find some wonders sometimes. Today will be interesting as we have no idea what to expect and the animals we'll find will be purely based on luck. Welcome back to the daily vlog. Today it is day 26 and we are going herping. Now we're following the car of our two new friends, Rami and Rudy, that are going to be showing us around and we're going towards a secret location. We can't reveal it. And before we even arrive, we were welcomed by a lot of surprise. Snake. Snake? What? No way, are you ready? We had found our first snake of the day, which was hiding in a dried water canal. It's not even been like two minutes and we already found a baby snake. Erinis linemaculatus, one of the five species of dwarf snakes in Lebanon. It's an insectivore. As you can see, it's harmless. Oh, yeah. Most of our species are non-venomous and even the venomous ones, they will not hurt us unless we threaten them or provoke them or step on them. So we just have to be careful when we're out in nature. Uh -huh. It's our responsibility. They're afraid of us and not the other way around. We're really lucky today. I hope it stays like that for the rest of the day. And now we're going to the second location, also a secret location. We entered an old house in ruins that apparently is a great place for snakes to hide. This is an old piece of the roof that just crumbled down. Perfect spot for uh, snakes to hide in because it gets very hot. In order for them to survive and to keep their body temperature the same, they hide under it. But they're not really cold-blooded, they just cannot regulate their temperatures like our bodies. We flipped over every tile and searched every bush until I saw something slithering under the rocks. Oh, there's a snake! Okay. I saw a snake. Hold, One hold, second. Hold, hold, hold. Uh, I'm not sure where Take it is. Okay. Is it here? Yeah, I probably lost it. Ah, we lost yeah. it. Ah, oh, so unlucky. It was very fast. As soon as they flipped the tile, it 50 centimeters or something. Can you see it? It's definitely longer than that. It was black for sure. If I see it, I can grab it, whatever it is. So that's a black snake shed. So what's this species, you know? The large rib snake. The snake sheds are probably the black one I saw but it's a couple of months old. Okay, we're leaving the second destination. We're going to the third destination. We didn't find anything, but that's part of the process of herping. It's about having no expectations and being open to whatever nature has to offer. And now it was time to explore a dried up river. We're gonna be walking on the riverbed and uh, hopefully it's to find the blunt nosed viper. The blunt-nosed viper is one of the biggest snakes in Lebanon. It's also one of the most venomous. But in general, Lebanese snakes aren't as dangerous as you may think. Most Lebanese snakes are not venomous. 25 known species so far. You have three highly venomous and five mildly venomous. The mildly venomous are usually are not capable of biting us because they are rear fanged. When they bite you, a quick bite, fangs rarely reach your skin at all. And their venom is not deadly for humans. They're made to kill lizards and small animals. We didn't end up finding any snakes here either, which was perfectly fine for me because we made another surprising a discovery instead. What? No way. Yeah. On the riverbed? <laughs> I didn't expect this at all. Wow. It's the first time actually in my life that I find a wild one. I'm so used to see them domesticated. This is wild. Purely from the nature. It's so wrinkly. <laughs> These tortoises are collected from the wild and they're major victims of pet trade in Lebanon. Wow. They're, they're slow, they're easy to collect, obviously, and people think just keeping them in a box and feeding them lettuce is enough, so they end up dying of malnutrition. I'm gonna release it in the wild. Did you find something else? Tiny toad? Where is it? <laughs> There's a crab hands here. Oh. So it's probably a bird that catched it from the river and that brought it here. Oh, that's, that's a claw. Oh, two, two dead crabs shaking hands. Okay, let's not make fun of dead nature, okay? Because you're gonna die one day, so please. 
We are back on the road with Adam now. We have three hours on the road. It's better to change areas. Here it turned out to be really dry. This year the rain wasn't very abundant. Uh, we're gonna try a more wet area, riverside, maybe with tree cover and stuff. So there will be more amphibians and more activity in the shade. While we were driving to our next spot three hours away, we got lucky. We just saw a dead snake on the road. Probably a, a car must have ran over it or something. It was just on the side of the road. And finally, after three hours on the road, we finally arrived to the destination in the Shouf, secret location. We're going down in the valley to find more animals. We're with three new guests. Hassan, You've seen me. Ali, his brother, and where's Mahmoud? Right here, a legend, also a co-founder of the NGO Lebanese Wildlife. Usually we take rescues, people find an injured wild animal, they report to us, we do the treatment phase, then we have a rehabilitation phase and the release. Before knowing each other, Mahmoud, Rami and Rudy were all passionate about wildlife. They would all carry out rescue operations on their own and bring injured animals to the same vet. And that vet gave them the idea to work all together under one organization. And that's how the NGO Lebanese Wildlife was born. We work also on the conservation projects. We do a lot of awareness lectures. And a year ago, we got registered as an official NGO uh, in Lebanon. And now it was time to explore the valley and its forests. This is a Near Eastern fire salamander. And it's injured in its leg. It was bleeding a bit, right? It's real dirty. Actually, something maybe attacked it or some fungal infection, maybe. The bright yellow spots are a sign for the predators to just be careful. They're very poisonous because of a toxin called salamandrin and it just paralyzes your whole body. If I eat this animal right now, I'm paralyzed for life. Eat it, eat it. <laughs> I want to see someone get poisoned. For science, for science. They are near threatened on a UCN red list, uh, mainly due to habitat loss. Some are collected for illegal pet trade here in Lebanon. It doesn't have actual predators. It's the humans that destroy their habitat. Others are affected by the water pollution. You know, they are produced in water bodies like other amphibians. Many people think they are very dangerous and kill them and crash them. And people create myths about almost any animal here just to have a reason to be destructive. Our next finds were less exciting. The skull of a rodent and a tortoise that had drowned in the river. Habitat loss, climate change and pollution are real threats to animals. And it's hard to grasp the negative impacts we humans have on our natural worlds when we don't even spend enough time in nature. As the night was falling, we started searching for the nocturnal animals that live in the valley. The valley is getting dark right now. It's getting more and more creepy as the time goes on. You can hear like all these different sounds in the woods. It's so cool to just walk in the forest at, at night, along the river, just listening solidly to the noises of nature and of the forest. We're trying to be as quiet as possible. So the porcupine, it's his burrow right here, and he probably left for the day in another cooler place. We just found two huge huntsman spiders. It's probably the biggest ones I've seen in Lebanon yet. And they're mildly venomous, so no handling them. Tarantulas would be a different story, but this is no joke. Ah! We then had the honor to find a couple of toads, which we heard before seeing them in the grass. The male is a bit bigger. Yes. And also he goes on top of the female. Actually, Nature yeah. stuff. <laughs> what? what is happening? He's bonding with you, man. No matter how much you kiss them, they do not turn into princesses. <laughs> Features. Yeah. We just saw shiny eyes, big shiny eyes. We heard the sounds and we saw the silhouette. They say it's a badger. I think it's a small wild boar. I'm not sure though. It got late and we decided to call it a night. <sighs> Unfortunately, we've been not very lucky with the mammals. And while we didn't end up finding any mammals or bigger snakes, that's not what today was about. It's not just about finding the animals, but also learning about things that you didn't expect to learn about, but that you actually end up learning. And that's what we happened today. We learned so much stuff. Herping stimulates our curiosity, awareness, and sense of responsibility. And it requires patience, ethics, and respect to do it the right way. In this century, we need these virtues more than ever. We've seen some tiny hints of the human impacts on nature Today. And sadly, a lot of times it's irreversible. The misinformation, lack of education, and fear that people have towards animals are threatening entire ecosystems, and Lebanon is no exception. But thanks to people like Rami, Rudi, Mahmoud, who are on a mission to rescue animals, document their work, and raise awareness about them, change is happening. The change is there for sure. It's slow in Lebanon, but it's there, and we're still trying not to leave Lebanon just for that. And we're focusing on kids and the next generation. Kids are actually showing so much interest in local wildlife. They just didn't get the chance to learn about it before. Herping 
sleeping isn't just a fun activity. It's also a great way to debunk myths and educate people on how to treat the fascinating wildlife of Lebanon and how we should protect it. Just yeah. contact us for whatever wildlife issues you have. Here's the link, LebaneseWildlife.org. Don't handle animals that you don't know anything yeah. about. Don't get too excited. Yep. Because they deserve also, as much as us, to live in the wild peacefully. Exactly. Hope you like the vlog and see you tomorrow, right? Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>